In today's video, we are installing security cameras around my property. The brand of security cameras I decided to go with are Zosi security cameras. And now you may be asking, why did I pick a CCTV style security camera system? The main reason why I picked uh, closed network security cameras or CCTV is because they can't really be hacked unless you have them plugged in online. Most smart cameras and smart security systems can be hacked and there's plenty of cases of that all around where those security cameras have been hacked in some way or another where people have gained access maliciously and have talked to either children or people within their homes. So I recommend not getting smart cameras or any kind of smart security systems that can connect to the internet um, without some encryption. There are software or ones out there that have full on encryption and whatnot, but still then again, the company could always go under and you could lose all that security. Now, today we're installing two types of cameras. Ones that you just point and shoot where you want it, whether you want it, this to be aimed upwards, it doesn't turn or, or you know anything, but it just kind of just swivels. And you can either have it mounted on the roof or on a wall pointing exactly where you want it, just straight point. It has a more wide angle. I've kind of noticed on the camera, it has way more wide angle compared to the second camera that we we're using, which is kind of a roundish camera that you can manually change where you want it looking at any time period. So we have four of those and four of these, these ones, the point and shoots around the property. They all have night vision. The night vision is actually pretty damn good, I will say, and motion detection and all that stuff. Uh, and they, they constantly record to my four terabyte hard drive that I have in the DVR. So before putting them on the roof, this is what I like to do. And I've done this with a few of them already and it works very well. Um, it's kind of a pain in the ass to try to hold it up there and screw it in. What I like to do is get some double-sided sticky tape, a uh, weatherproof double-sided sticky tape. And I like to... I get a little piece off that I need. Some scissors, get some scissoring right here, like that, right? And then slap that little piece on there. So not only do you have three screws holding it to the ceiling or wherever you want it, you also have three things of sticky tape holding it up there too. So. Uh, gives it extra like gripping anchoring to the ceiling because not only is this this double sided sticky tape gonna last probably about five years because it's weatherproof you also got the screws in there so it'll probably actually last longer because the screw pressure holding it all in there so it's not always being pulled down by gravity it's being completely held up there so they should stay where you want them to stay so yeah now with these uh, directional ones, with the ones you point and you wor where you want them to shoot them, you have to um, unscrew a screw here to be able to get them to little change a little bit. They will not turn, so you kind of just got to set it up that way and then uh, run your wire how you need it. So. All right, let's go install all eight cameras and let's get this done.
Now that all eight cameras are installed, you may be wondering why I ran the wiring down the siding and into my basement, or sorry, crawl space. Main reason why I did this is because up in the attic there's not a lot of room in those areas where I'm installing the cameras. It is very close, like I could probably barely even reach if I wanted to and there's nothing up there really to stand on or be on besides some 2x4 beams up there. So it really wasn't ideal. It's easier for me to just to jump down into my crawl space and run the wires up and over the little 2x4 beams between my floorboards and the foundation and I can run it through there then up into my closet where I have the DVR. It's just easier for me to run it that way because there's more room and it's not little tight cramped spaces for me to try to grab into. And that is the main reason why I ran it down into my crawl space. And it's easier to install and uninstall in the future if I need to, if I need to move cameras around by running the wires through uh, my siding and stuff. So that's why I did it that way. Okay, so let's get to the meat and potatoes of this video. And that is video quality. Just because something says it's 1080p doesn't mean the quality is the best. It can be 1080p, it can be 4K, but if it doesn't have a lot of megapixels and stuff, it's not gonna have the best quality. Now, the quality of a video is a mixture of megapixels, resolution and frame rate, and a few other things that I'm too stupid to know about. And I should honestly know more about. But for the most part, I want you to ask me, does this look good? I have a security camera right there pointing right at me and I'm looking at it right now and I hopefully I have the video footage of this <laughs> and talking to you guys. Unfortunately for the editing of this video, I couldn't figure out how to actually get the video off of the DVR and how to like have it like turn into MP4 because it wants to do an AVI which my Mac for some reason won't read it so I don't know I got I gotta figure that out um but the video quality is great so let's just continue um right now it's just shot on my iPhone looking at the screen but it it, it works that's the whole point uh but hopefully hopefully in the future I can get an update and actually have video pulled off my DVR and show it to you guys but uh until then this is what we have to deal with not only do I have that video camera, I also have the video camera up here that's pointing out to the back of my property and it can get edge to edge of my property and see who's back there. And yeah, the, when you get very far back where the house is right there, one of our neighbors whose house is on the back part of their property, which is basically almost touching the back part of our property, um, you can see... You can barely see them moving around, but you can still see them moving around back there. It's less quality, but like when you're closer up, which is right in where I want things are protected, you can see everything. I like it. It's 1080p. I think it's about 20 to 30 frames a second. It kind of varies in there. It's not always 30. Like you can tell when it like drops down. Sometimes some of the frame rate is kind of lowered down depending if there's a lot of activity going on within the the footage but you just need at least about 20 or higher for good security footage anyways so I think it looks great but at the end of the day it is your choice whether you like it or not I'm still going to get a ring doorbell to put in the front of my house just just to have for my phone but other than that I would not put any other kind of smart cameras around your property unless you want people to see what you're doing <laughs> Now that we're done looking at all that footage right there, at the end of the day, it is still your choice whether or not you want to do this uh, closed network security system or not. If you want better quality, I honestly recommend the one with the Ethernet cable plug-in. Besides, uh, that one does both power and data over the same line. And I've been told that those are really great for quality-wise and whatnot. But uh, if you're just looking at it for a budget way of doing it, which this wasn't super expensive, um, I say it's actually pretty good for the price of what it is. But at the end of the day, it's, it is, like I always say, it is your choice whether you want this or not, or if you want to do bigger and better or lesser. But hopefully this helps you 
decide what you want to do with your security system and make a better informed decision. But uh, that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, have a good one. See you in the next video. Thank you.